Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are excited to present Nick Longo today for your viewing pleasure. We're going to have <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> Nick is going to be doing a walk up pasta bar. So it's really Does exciting. that just sound amazing right now? I'm, I'm, I'm so ready, excited. I'm ready to get lunch now. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you guys are on YouTube, come on over to Behance. Come hang out with us. That's where we're reading chats, where we're interacting, be a part of the community. We have a lot of really great things on Adobe Live on Behance. Behance is a great platform for you. Just get started, post your portfolio, get critiques, all that good stuff, interact and engage with the community. Uh, Jacqueline, Val is here as well. Clever, Delvin, Devlin, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well. So Nick, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and sure. your background? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm based in Los Angeles. I'm kind of a graphic designer by trait. Started with packaging, branding, more specifically now in restaurant, food, and beverage branding. Uh, that's kind of the wheelhouse I really enjoy the best, you know, um, also because you get great clients out of it and you get to go to their places and, and <laughs> have some great food and drink, you know, and, and bring your friends and stuff. So it's always a blast. And uh, as well, I teach at um, a Cal State University Northridge here in LA as well and teach a, a branding class. Um, and that's just to me, one of the best things to do in addition to what you get to do as a job, like just to get to teach and do that, um, as well as being here on Adobe with folks like you and and getting to uh, design live. It's always a blast. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's one of the best parts about, you know, doing these streams is that you get to interact with chat, you get to collaborate yeah. in real time, just like, you know, you're teaching, mentoring, speaking, all those great things. You get to do that real time, yeah. in real space, just get to really brainstorm together. Which yeah. Is, Especially okay, now, I think it just seems like everybody's been getting really into finding some like way to network when you can't network, you know? So uh, I'm a big fan of uh, meeting new folks and getting on online here with this. And uh, we'll see what we can do in two days, man. Yeah. So two days, what are yeah. we doing? Tell me, how did this come around? What are we doing? What yeah. So I, I thought of this idea of um, I wanted to try a condensed, quick, fast version of a branding project. Um, I've been noticing over the last few months, I've had random clients that have come that are just in need of something so quickly because they are either pivoting their business, changing their models, figuring out how to be more uh, efficient and more productive and actually, actually make money during a time like this, right? Big restaurants being challenged. And so my idea was I was looking around in the news and, and I started this, um, this really cool uh, research into what has been popping up all over the place. And that is these uh, pop-up windows and they could be windows of, on their own, just small kitchens, almost like these ghost kitchens that are coming up all over the place. Um, but also it could be a, a bigger restaurant that just needs a, an outlet for takeout and delivery. Um, but the cool thing is, is you want to still capture them with some branding and some personality and, and, uh, and an experience, right? Like I think, that's kind of the whole idea here. And what do you want to say with a brand like this? What's important to say? You get a probably a smaller chance to make an impression because they're in and out so quickly. So that was the challenge. And I, I, it was really kind of cool to see that right now these restaurants are adding them and they're also developing from scratch. So um, I just wanted to pick something, Alex, that I think people that are watching, if you are looking to add something to your resume, this would be a gr or your portfolio. This kind of a project would be a great thing to do. Yeah. And it touches on so many really great things, right? Exactly. You know, we're hiring designers. I want to see somebody who, who can think, who can put rationale yeah. and thought and logic and do some of the strategy work that kind of builds a really strong case for yeah. what the visuals are. Because that's only, you know, the visuals are a great thing, but it's sometimes the paint that, you know, at, mm -hmm. at the end of the project that makes it really sing. But yeah. if you can do this, like, like you've already positioned it, it's brilliant. It tells everybody through the project and sets you up for success with presenting your yeah. plans. Yeah, man. So that's the plan. So we're going to try to do uh, 
today's the messy day. It's going to be just getting in there, figuring out what works. I'm going to take you through kind of what my preset stuff is first. We'll, we'll, we'll bounce around, make a few logos. My idea here is we're even helping them name the, the place. So I Beautiful. think that's always a fun thing, right? That's like the best part of uh, working in food and beverage is helping him with the name and, and copywriting and things like that. So we're going to go through that process. And then hopefully tomorrow we will polish them up and make systems out of them. So the final two that we like will build the alternatives and the secondaries and those other emblems that they can use. Um, I'm a big fan of giving my clients tons of good stuff to use. So even if it's social media and it's not me designing a flyer for them, maybe it's someone internally, they have all the tools and you want to give them all that. So they don't mess up your brand <laughs> more <Absolutely>. or less. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, this is great. And chat, if you have some really great, crazy ideas for this walk up, you know, Oh, hell yeah. Spaghetti shop that you want to throw into chat, give us all the names you got because it's like you said, it's going to be messy. We're going to get red sauce all over our shirts yeah. today. <laughs> maybe literally, maybe they're figuratively. So I didn't wear white. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> Yeah, cool. if, you, if you have any ideas chat please present them we'll, we'll try to incorporate your ideas where and question and questions too i'm a i'm a big fan of like stop me in my tracks tell ask me if I, if there's something i'm doing right wrong or you've never seen we'll slow it down i know we all have our own little toolbox of things we use in illustrator uh over time to get better and better so uh if there's anything you have a question about just feel free to ask while we're working yeah I agree. Perfect. All right. We ready Let's to crack go into it. All right, man. So I, I started here and this is really kind of my idea. I just put together a quick bunch of tiles, artboards. I like to keep everything in one. Um, I like to even stay in the, in the application as much as possible when I'm in this yeah. stage. And what I do is I, as a brief overview, put in my rationale and all my stuff, my upfront, some uh, do's and don'ts, my sketches, and then maybe even um, some typography or, or fonts that I think I choose ahead of time before I actually get into it. Um, I'm finding out that sectioning off these little times and I can be more proficient when I'm designing if all I got to do is design and not search for a font and not find that perfect icon that I had designed six months ago, right? <laughs> totally. And it looks you like know? you already pulled some really, really nice typefaces together just yeah. like kind of get the the noodle going you know oh noodle. look at this guy he's already writing he's already writing taglines for me man <laughs> i love it <laughs> the noodler the noodler yeah. i love it so i'm gonna go right into this area here and um my first thing here is i always try to start off with this brand ethos before we start what does it mean we're gonna build this logo system for a walk-up pasta bar window and i i'm just thinking pasta's comfort food pasta's you know the the kind of like in my blood so it's kind of like to me i can get behind this i can to, truly get into it if i wasn't a fan of something and i'm doing it for a client i think I'm, I'm sure you're the same way you want to get a little bit into it and figure out a little bit about that that topic or that that particular area right absolutely yeah when, I, when i'm dealing with clients and sometimes our strategy might not be completely baked in or like whenever we're doing the discovery phase we might decide Okay, that initial idea for your restaurant was good, but like it's too similar to your competitors. So like, how yeah, do you punch you? Yeah. And then you can kind of test that and pivot it and have those conversations. So that exactly, man. You yeah. have a play box to kind of work there, in. There you go. And that you can almost call this entire page just like the commandments, everything. And mm -hmm. I have it here. That way, like I might have shown this to the client already, but I want to have it while I'm working, you know? So go to I go with like the 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 big four takeaways, maybe with the conversation we had with the with the with the, the client, they want something super fast, but incredibly delicious, made from scratch. So maybe a, a few logos in there that are a little bit more gritty and a little bit more uh, kind of hand done and beyond convenient. That's kind of the idea that like, you can pick this up, you can get it delivered, you can order it and wait, whatever the process is. Um, my funnest kind of area of when I'm working on a logo is this idea of the archetype and who they are. And I wanted to pick one that I thought was a little, I one I've never really, uh, experience with an, a previous client and that is the liberator. And when I read up on that and there's a great book, I put a few sh like kind of captures of the, of the thing here using Adobe scan plug. <laughs> I love that app. If you have books and you're trying, you want to bring it into your, uh, ecosystem here and have it as type and everything very quick way to do it. Liberator to me was this great idea. Like I just love the idea of even seeing that graphic that was already telling me what I wanted this brand to kind of start looking like. And the second one is kind of the hero. This is like the, the second kind of archetype. I always have a second one that's like 
supporting that's kind of in the same way. But when you find all this great content, what you get is this great stuff to start building it. So they're the voice for the common good. They're a champion for like people in need. They're motivated by this belief of freedom and purposeful action. They're often ahead of the curve. That, that sounds like my pasta window place, right? But I saw this line and I laughed because it says they don't see walls, but they rather see windows of possibilities. I was like, okay, boom. We, we have a tagline already building here, right? Um, limitless belief, authentic compassion. They see with fresh eyes, shatter the myth, all that fun stuff. Um, and then I just brought in images to sh like, this might be in my pitch deck to guy show the client how relevant this is right now. You know, these are so out there and there's some of these, like, I love this one. Like what a great idea, right? To just paint right on there, right on the side of the building. What used to be just a, a boring window is now a very engaging, you know, design. Yeah, so, food trucks under the rage, right? Isn't so. this great? Yeah, and and then to see like even like this. Look at this one, the chicken and fish, right? Another fish bar. This idea that we're now kind of looking for these things, man. You know, it's like that's just how uh, how it is. So I also get into like some examples, and I want to show the client. This is all about doing it fast paced, right? This is like giving them something in a few days rather than a few weeks. I will even show them some stuff and say, this is kind of what we want to do. Are we good? Like. They signed off on this kind of vibe. And then I even show them maybe like some ideas of what we don't want to do. And by no means am I saying these are bad. They're just not appropriate for what I need to be doing, you know, for this company. I don't want it to be too detailed or too um, kind of intricate so that it doesn't really stand out and get something in there, you know? Yeah. And it, and it goes back to like what we are and what we aren't is a yeah. really great way to build a case for a brand strategy, yeah. right? By yeah. saying we are not these kind of, so the bottom row that he says that we do not want is that kind of more authentic, traditional Italian mm -hmm. style spaghetti pasta packaging type thing. Exactly. And everything in his brand rationale leading up to that says we're different. We're, we're kind of shattering what is the, the status quo. Yeah. We're doing something completely different, which is why all of his inspiration leans more towards yeah. modern and clean, sophisticated kind of looks. Yeah. And that also gives you a chance to kind of like, really hone them in on what exactly you want. And when they come back and say, oh, this is maybe not what I expecting, th that chances of that happening are very less now because you've walked them through that process a lot, Correct. you know? You're yeah. kind of leading them through the process and yeah. getting closer and closer and closer without yeah. having to do this wide spectrum of design work exactly. that's gonna get thrown out. You're yeah. just trying to get everybody on the same page early on. Yeah. So here, I just want to even write out a few things before I even get started. And I show this to my students a lot too, because I think when you're, when you've written a few things already, like possible taglines or what the brand might say, that helps me with the, the logo design because I've already figured this out. And if I need a quick tagline, I can pull it from here. And then the names that I started thinking of, this is kind of where we went. I had Pronto Go. I just love this idea of Pronto and Go being something to really emphasize that it's a takeaway. Um, Veluche means fast in Italian. And I love that idea too, that it just was very simple. No one else owns that word. Like, you know, at least in our, in our area. So you always think about competitors. Like, is there anybody out there that might have something similar? Uh, and Porto Via means takeaway in Italian. I kind of like that one. And then this, there's this great term called quanto pas, uh, basta with a P, a, a, a B. And that means as much as needed. And it's one of those things where uh, like an old Italian grandma will tell you, I don't have a recipe, but what I do have is quanto pasta. And it means I just put the right amount as much as needed and magic happens, right? So that to me was the quintessential like name. I love this, but I'm going to call it quanto pasta as the change. And then uh, Veluche, I thought Veluche, I thought was a really good one as well, because I think that could be memorable. And I'm also even thinking ahead here because I want to sketch this out. Like, so I want to, I love V logos, right? They're just the perfect symmetrical, everything about them, you know? So I was messing around with those and I don't know, like, do you, do you do sketch primarily uh, paper or do you do iPad? What's, what do you usually do? I typically walk straight into Illustrator. I'm you do? Kind of okay. Just a go to Illustrator kind of guy. I'm just, and, and start building, right? Yeah, just start building, start playing with my shapes, start starting to see what's working, what's yeah. not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a, of, a good question for uh, uh, chat. If, where do you, do you go straight to Illustrator or be honest, do you actually go and sketch, right? Because yeah, I, I exactly. don't have a feeling, dude. Like, it's like you can't, you're, you're sketching to me is like, sometimes it feels like, oh man, I don't have time. It's such a quick thing. But 
I, I think you get better results when you do it. And to me, even just yeah. doing some, these were all done on the iPad with like just the pencil one. And to me, I could take that anywhere, do it when I need to. And I was messing around. So I got a few here. We'll come back to in a sec. I even started listing out some great font ideas. Um, most of these are from Adobe font kit, you know, in type and some of them, this one, I actually sketched by my, I, on the, on the, on the iPad, I was trying a few handmade things. So there's a balance, right? I want to, as much as I love this and I, I, I know this is going to be probably one of the logo ideas. I do want to mess around with a combination of found and good stuff. Absolutely. And then, and then this is where I love you go to old files that you have. And again, if you're doing this on the fly and you're doing something very quick, find those things that like, I keep an AI file that just has arrows and circles and flags and swoosh marks and whatever, right? Like, I think we're all getting pretty used to that. And even some grit, like I just have some, some uh, great scanned grit things that I've streamlined and live traced. So I've got those ready to go if I need to do anything fun like that. So we're going to get rolling. And I think the best thing to do, and maybe like head back to these and like kind of start if you and I were like the design agency, yeah. you know, where do we start? Like, I, I kind of like this idea of starting simple and maybe going a well, little Nick, bit more. Real quick, before yeah. we start, Megan Go had us a question about what was the book name? Oh, it is called, a lot of people. yes, I will show you the, here. this is it here, the archetypes of branding, right there. So look at that, on demand. I'm like an Amazon store over here. <laughs> exactly. um, by far the best, best, book that has, you know, everything else kind of sits in my, on my bookcase and looks good. This one is always on my desk. Yeah. It's a, it's a great book, especially because it tells everybody right. kind of like a lot of people need the personification of a brand so that they can yeah. understand what yeah. a brand is. Cause it's hard for some people to be like, my brand is authentic. What does that mean? But like, if you can tie it to a person, some people oh, do it by celebrities best. where they're like, if our brand was a celebrity, who would it be? And it's like, yes, uh, Nicholas Cage, you know, whatever yeah. it is. So yeah. <laughs> think of, think about that. Just think about how your clients present. Those are always really good. Yeah. Just to like try to yeah. break down the the barrier of understanding. Yeah. Them. As long as like Tiger King or something doesn't show up there, I think we'd be we'll be. How good. exotic is my spirit animal? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still have refrained from watching. I cannot. I can't do it. Man. I can't do it. Do you uh, like somebody it? else? Somebody yeah. else asked about your toolbars that you have on the side. I know you yes. see. I see you have swatches, but. You want to walk through kind of how oh, you yeah. built out your stuff? I I was really kind of competing with like, I had the different one on almost every computer, it seemed yeah. like. And so I finally took the time and I just built out what I want. I like the single row on the left. I like that just, it. you've got all that that height to stack them. Why not do that rather than the two column? And um, I like this idea of using libraries so much now that libraries to me are always a go-to. And then I have the ones that are probably most common. And then I've even narrowed it down to like, I just have them out in the open. These are the ones that you're always touching. And I found that if I'm just going in here and opening them up here and closing them, is that two, three clicks I didn't need to do, right? Absolutely. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of my, that's kind of like the, the way I've kind of set it up. Um, other than that, I think Pathfinder in, in, when you're in a logo situation, is like your number one toolbar, exactly. right? Um, and I don't I, think it's turned on by default. I think you have to go in and actually go to your window, turn on mm -hmm. Pathfinder. Yes. You can quickly find it. So yeah. pro tip, and anyone who's just starting in Illustrator, turn on your Pathfinder because totally. you're going to use it all yeah. the time. And then, you know, don't forget, you can make your own workspaces. So I've basically mm -hmm. titled mine and I have it on the iMac. I have it on the, it's a little different on like your, your uh, MacBook Pro. So um, that way you, even if you mess things up, you can always just go back to your default and get back to, you know, your school, right where you wanted with all those. So that's exactly. kind of how I do it. Yeah, for yep. sure. Cool. Hope that answered uh, the question there. So I, let's get starting to build here. I'm going to find some of the stuff that I think I had, which was this one here. And I'm a, I've been, I've been doing this lately where I'm kind of like going right over the, the drawings that I brought in. And yep. what I'll do is I'll kind of like, let's see, I got to move your zoom window here. There we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Always love doing zoom and uh, designing at the same time. So I'm going to, I just would start kind of messing around and seeing, do I have anything that starts to work with this vibe? And I'm already going, yeah, I love this. Right? Like, there's something cool here going on. I, I want to do this kind of penne with the flag on it. So I'm just going to like, and I, I always go black and white first. Like I'm not even, 
thinking of colors at this point. I don't know if you're the same way, right? Yeah, absolutely. You have to do it in black and white. Do not do it in color first or else yeah. you're going to trick yourself into thinking you have a good mark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just going to start building some stuff. I will basically do, man, I, I used to be one of those people that would be like, I'd be such a stickler. I'd be trying to make the stuff look good as I was going. And I found that if I just get my idea out, I can always go back and mess yep. with it later, right? So Absolutely. starting with a block and I'm just gonna like, just start messing around with it and figuring out, am I good? Is that, does the angle line up 100%? Maybe not, but it looks good to me right now. <laughs> so yep, I, totally. I just like kind of like figuring this out and then I could always center make sure everything's kind of good. Um, so this way I can kind of see like, is that even a pro uh, an idea that I like, right? Um, maybe what I'll do is like, since I've got some rounded corners already and some, slight ones there i'll do the same with this here get that going so now they feel pretty solid and cool is that enough for me right now maybe so i'll do another one like i'll just take take it duplicate it over i think i got a white in there yeah and figure out is there something else i could do you know maybe this angle here is too steep and i want to try one a little bit more that's going to fit that that route right yeah so let me just lock this guy so we don't have any problems with him. Cool. So yeah. shortcut also for you guys at home locking, you can do command two on a Mac and there you go. control two and then control shift two to unlock. Perfect. Those are, those are my babies, the command. Oh, I, I gotta get, you know, someone was telling me like be more, I don't work with layers in Illustrator until the very end when it's like, I'm sending it out to print Correct. really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very different than your typical, uh, you know, thing with, um, like Photoshop, like Photoshop yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, but someone was telling me be more specific so you can, if all of your sketches are on a layer, I can do that lock quicker. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, I like, it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I got to get into that. You got to get me into that, uh, into that, uh, that shortcut. Cause we, I yeah. think we all have our favorites and then you like kind of go, Hmm, I, I don't even know the lock one, but I know <laughs> like, you know, all the other ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally. No, that's, that's, Everybody can do their own thing in Illustrator. Exactly. And like for me, coming from like Photoshop was really hard. Like being like, "What? No layers!" And then now I've just all I did is like I worked at a company a long time ago that all yeah. we did was Illustrator for web work and everything. So like, I just do <laughs> one layer, lock everything I need to, group things that I don't. You know, like just yeah, all that stuff is real fun. Yeah. So I'm just gonna I popped into Envelope Distort. I'm thinking, let me just try one with a little bit of that wave. And I think what's cool is like. Now I'm already seeing where that kind of helps maybe with the way the um, the top of that penne is. If I can get that like that, there's kind of a nice natural line going there as well. So I kind of like the way that looks um, here. That's I also will... a really great way of showing how to do those envelope distorts because I typically yes. just do that in the pin tool. So yeah, and yeah, that's exactly. Thing. So you're showing well, shortcuts. You're Great right. Stuff. That's that's kind of a really cool way to do it. So. I kind of like where that's already going there. Then I can do this idea where I had one maybe where it's like with the the flag here. And that's where I can put maybe, you know, if I'm doing a Quanto Pasta, I can put a Q and a B in there because uh, I'm splitting that flag up, right? So we'll try this guy here. Same idea. And then, um, all right, so here's, here's where the magic's gonna be, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna be like, how would I build this guy? Well, I've already got the guy above kind of ready to go, right? Yep. All I got to do is kind of take him and maybe split it and see how it works, right? Yeah. So at this point, you're still, yeah. we're just experimenting with what a mark could look like. Are you yeah. going to try to fit that into whatever word you have? Or are you going to say, you know what, I've got a really great mark and I'm just going to fit the naming around that? How Probably a little bit of this? both. I would for sure know that from this sketch, I was trying to do the V. Uh, so this would be for, uh, Voluce, right? So this one, I, I'm kind of seeing a V already in here. Yeah, yeah. And I, I kind of like that, I, that idea. If I have one or two of these and maybe three ready, then what I would do is kind of go, okay, that makes sense. I, I think now I can kind of drop in a few different things there and see, you know, what, what might work there. Right. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So I'm just going to pick a spot. We'll cut this off here. Take this guy. And, um, let's see how this starts to work. So this would be. This one's going to go like that and then down here. Oh, there we go. Grab this guy. Okay. And I could probably go a little bit further here. 
A little bit off, but let's see. Our but our buddy Wireframe can always help out. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever showed that to someone and they go, "Wait a minute, what was that?" <laughs> yeah, they, they lose their mind. To do this, you can press Command Y, and this goes Wireframe mode, or you can do Control Y. Don't you, I, I love it's, that. It's such a great way of aligning layers yeah. and paths, especially if you don't have like Snap to Pixel on. Yeah, yeah. It's a really great lifesaver. Oh, I love that. It just works every time. There we go. All right, cool. So. Getting rid of that extra point. We'll straighten him up. Get that over here. There we go. All right. Eh, maybe not. I think because this like it breaks up that kind of space in there a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so I'll just leave it alone. I mean, you um, can make that probably a little bit wider. Like you can move that ribbon over, but then that gets more into more yeah. horizontal space. And maybe that's yeah, what we're exactly. looking for. Yeah, you're right. So maybe the simplicity of what we have is kind of cool too. Um oh, it's looking good. Yeah. I am also even thinking like you just kind of, you could do something kind of cool, like putting a diagonal in like that. And maybe it just looks like a folded, you know, flag in a little oh, bit. Yeah, yeah. Right. So just as a, a an alternative, uh, let's get it to be the same width. There we go. Come on. There we go. I love that when that happens. You're like, I'm just now I'm going to be the stickler and make sure it lines up as good as possible. Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting somewhere, just starting some good stuff. I think this kind of looks cool as the V. I think this one to me, like I'm a big fan of st standing back and looking at stuff because you're so in it so many times that I think you can't see the big picture. So just pulling back a little bit makes me see that, okay, I see what th this one might be the strongest one for now, you know, and um could be something to worth worth trying i think i won't even get into type until we're like maybe make a few more so um right. let's see what else um we'll stick with the v's the other one i kind of liked was this guy down here and then this one too was this idea of like after i drew it i was thinking maybe the two secondary lines could be squiggles almost like in the fusili kind of vibe right yeah. I'm going to be dropping pasta names. So get ready, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff. So right. I think for the rest yeah. of this uh, next two days, I think we have to say every time we're going to copy pasta something. Is that better? <laughs> yeah. <Copy pasta. laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love it. All right, cool. So this is kind of, I, I like this idea because it's kind of forming a V. Do you usually, like when you're, I'm curious, like when you're in a situation like this, do you usually, um, find yourself a, a V that works or would you just start building it? Like, Oh man, that's a great question. You know, it really, so I, I typically have my name designed like down pat and approved by the client sure. before I get it in this. So then yes, like once, and I'll have like a, an aesthetic that I'm probably yeah. going to try to hit. Yeah. And then I'll get all everything done before I build the, like the mark. Yeah. Uh, so going mark first is like, not my strongest, I think, because oh, cool. like I okay. typically try to like I do all the other stuff before I try to like fit just the the mark and stuff into it. I think gotcha. it also depends on the project, but yeah, yeah, that's cool. I like mm -hmm. that idea. So I, I I knew I had a font that I thought would be something kind of really cool, and this is uh, Aviano, staying in the Italian family, <laughs> I should say. Um, and I'm gonna just swap it because I think if we got the thicker one to the right. And the thinner one to the left because of the flag, we yeah. might have something cool there, right? It's looking so, great. Yeah. So it kind of matches. I didn't even plan that, guys. I'm serious. <laughs> so I'm going to just get that. I'm going to create outlines to it. And um, yeah, I think this is kind of a cool idea. So let's see. I'm going to go and what should we do next? Let's see. So I'm going to get, do I have this as a whole or? Yeah, there we go. So. Cool. All right, we'll move him aside. Oops. Oh, that's an uncompound path. All right, cool. There we go. So that's kind of right on there. I think the only thing I did was I kind of have it a little tapered, which I think would be adds to a little bit of that excitement, like just getting a little bit tapered there. Yeah, yeah. That looks cool. And then for this guy, let's uh, mess around here. I like watching, I've been watching a lot of other streams just to see what, how other designers do certain things, you know, when it comes to, there's so many different 
you know, when you like, you look at something, you're like, there's nine ways to do it. <laughs> yeah. A billion. It's exactly. Like, yeah. Like, it's pretty yeah. incredible. So I might even just be better off building this like solo. So let's see, I'm going to get that here. We'll do something a little bit here. How are you with the, with the pin tool? A wizard. I, oh I, yeah. Yeah. I love I'm that. a lot happier uh, working on the pin tool in Illustrator than I am in Photoshop. But yeah. some people are the opposite because they're slightly yes. different. Yep. A little bit nuanced and yeah, I'm much bigger fan of these. Again. You know, yeah. Like, I think it was, it's interesting too, where you have, I think your first instinct is to put as many as possible, you know, when it comes to the points yep. and the, the, the true craft is doing it with as little as possible, you know, exactly. and, and figuring out how it works. And I think what's great too, is you get a much better um, kind of result when it's that much less, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, and the great oh, thing is like, if you so needed great. to, you could always get those astute plugins to like yes. simplify some of your edges without having to like rebuild it. I know Illustrator just came out with a better yeah. simplified tool, but yeah. there's, you know, you, there's options. Yeah. Do you know uh, Bob Ewing? I do. Yeah. He's so, insane with his. He, he, he's so great. If, if you guys haven't seen any of his videos, he, he came in and did a tutorial with my class last semester. Oh, awesome. And, and I mean, I, I've never seen chat so crazy they were just like he just built that with like four points like the guy is a master when it comes to that kind of stuff it's just so cool yeah. love that kind of stuff so uh, so for yeah, people who ahead. came in late to the stream yeah 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 what's the idea behind the flag oh so the flag to me is this idea that like there's something victorious there's something liberating about having this i want it to be something that's going to be when people see it, they're going to think, oh, that's the place. Like there's, it says so much, right? It kind of stakes your, your place uh, as far as a location. Um, it also has that liberating factor that we want. That's part of our, uh, our um, brand archetype. And as well, it's, it's basically saying they're, they're kind of just changing the game. Like I think it represents so much to people, which is kind of cool, you know, yeah. love and that I think idea. For me, looking at what, from the outsider perspective, I think when I see the yeah. flag, you're talking about speed, talking about authenticity. A lot of these things, veloce, all these V straight things tie back into like racing, you know? Yeah. What does it look like from like a old Italian Ferrari, you know? Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Formula one love, type thing. I love that idea. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I love that idea. So let's see. I'm the only thing I want to do now is kind of start. I, I have this flag idea here, but I do have kind of this section over. And I think the best way to do it for me is I would just take this and do an offset path here. So, cause all, what I want to do is have a negative space in there that I'm going to knock out. So I'm going to do like 0.03, maybe, maybe three, five, let's make it three, five. And I won't round it. Cause I think it'll look better if it's sharp. There we go. So all it did is it made, took my flag made of a slightly bigger version of it. Cause I want to minus that from that second one. So, I'm just going to take it, send it to back. So it's behind this. Whoops. Uh, let me just do it so you guys can see. Copy it. X. Now I'm just going to paste it right behind it. And then when pasta you pasta it behind it, pasta okay. it. Oh, sorry, man. There we go. <laughs> so it's getting somewhere. It might be too much of a, of a, of a, of a, of a gap there. So if so, I can just always go backwards. There we go. Get this guy. Do it again. I love. One thing I love about these things is that when you go back to offset path, it keeps exactly what you use prior. Yeah. So I'm just going to go to two. There we go. Copy that. Put it behind this guy. Uh, back. There we go. And that and that. And so now, in case you guys don't know, back. all there these copy paste behind and in front, you can just do command F or control F yeah. and command B e and or control B. So in front, yeah. behind, all those good things. Yeah. So super helpful in illustration. Perfect. So if I, I just want to have, let's see, I think this one is open. So let's close this guy right now. And then just because I want to have the same angle, I'm gonna I can start it from there and just kind of get this kind of let's see, more like here and there. And then whoops, what am I doing? There. And then let's get this guy back down here because we don't need it. So I was just trying to figure out, is there some nice looking base here that's going to be, uh, I don't know. 
this might be the one I come back to. <laughs> it's tough, right? You start getting into those like, oh, is this one pixel off? Or like, how do I stretch this? Yeah. How do I build this baseline? There we go. Something like that where I feel like it could look a little too, you risk having something that might be a little bit too golf-like, you know? Oh yeah, I can see it you being golfy. Right? So this could be something you go back to and, and mess around with. But I like to just, again, have start having these ideas where I think I have enough that it's going to be fun to kind of just pick and choose which ones I like. Maybe totally. here, let's get this one a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. So does that really look like a V? Maybe not. So again, like I'm going to leave it there because we can always come back and refine it. Cool. So there's that one. Look at that chat. That's like less than 30 minutes. You already have like, I know man. Concepts yeah. ready to go. I yeah. love that's to me. Like, do you, do you sometimes kind of like marvel at kind of like, I think it's just the tools you use, right? Like it's just about doing it, man. I think this yeah. is, it's so much fun to like you be able to flow. do all this. Yeah, exactly. Right. So for this one too, I think maybe what I'll do is kind of do these all in lines and then uh, expand it. So to me, um, that might be the best way to do it. And then I can keep things kind of parallel and on track. So let's get these like nice and lined up. And I would just take this one here, duplicate it there, and we'll cut this guy here. I'm excited to see how this one turns out because I'm really biased, but I don't yeah. I know. So let's see. And then I'm going to make this one a little bit shorter there. And oh, what happened here? Do I have two points? Oh, look at that. I do. Let's get rid of that guy. So if you guys are just turning in right now, yes, uh, we are building a walk up or Nick is building. I'm just here watching <laughs> getting hungry as we think yeah, exactly about it. right. <laughs> uh, we are Nick is building a walk up pasta bar. He's already kind of walked through some of the strategy work for it. Essentially, it's about authenticity and speed. And what else am I missing? Oh, gosh. It's going to be the liberating brand. It's going to help you, you go. with con good, convenient food, fresh. But the whole idea is that it is a walk-up place. You're going to be there just very, very in and out. But we do want to give you an experience. We want to give you that brand experience that's going to be memorable, really you know, all that kind of stuff. So just as much fun as it would have been to be in the restaurant and they'll be there when everything's over and you know, our pasta bar, the window will be there for just to go, but I'll be inside is eating as well. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of like the, the neighborhood Italian mom, right? Like exactly. You come in, get that little taste yep. of your mom's spaghetti sauce. Exactly. <laughs> yep. I love it. So there we go. Just kind of was messing around with that. And, uh, all I'm going to do is like, Sometimes too, what I will do is I'll build just a, a block because I know I'm going to be cutting this and using probably Pathfinder a little bit. So with this guy, we'll turn it to the kind of somewhere in that angle that I had because I think once this gets trimmed and like real crisp, that's going to look really, really cool. So that's about the right angle there. Okay. Uh, what else do I got to do with this one? Anything else? Oh, looks like we have that extra one still here. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So um, I think we we're saying we're going to have two. We're going to have one like this. And then I want to do one with the squiggle, right? With the squiggle. The squiggles. Got to do it. So I'm just going to grab those two and um, go to distort zigzag and what you get is not what you want but that i now i want the zigzags yes I mean, look it's come like, on it's a kind of like bacon like right it. yeah <laughs> or is it it's uh pancetta <laughs> sorry yes exactly. you thank you <laughs> so i'm gonna give it a little bit more this is super controllable well it's way too much let's see where were we at uh, 0.01 too little uh 0.05 way too much 0.02 that looks good okay yeah and it, cool. if you guys are new to the design career yeah, yeah a lot of what you're going to do is <laughs> up one or down two <laughs> up one you know like you're going to be constantly. clicking arrows all day long yeah. is, it, is it better over here just one pixel over is it better I, over is here? that right i know pixel over. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to welcome that's to. our world right 
Hilarious. All right. So this I want as a solid. So for now, I'm just going to uh, close this guy off here. But what I'll do is I'm going to take all of these now that let's see, I want to make sure they go past uh, where my crop line is going to be. So this has got to go past that. I'm going to go past to that. Past to that. Oh, my <laughs> Just, God, dude. Alex, you're hilarious. Uh, <laughs> never going to be invited back for all the puns. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for Val to have like a pun counter built into. There you go. Chat. Oh, my God. There you go. And then there. Cool. Maybe next year at Adobe Max, you could do a whole pun uh, session, you know? Yeah, I would love to give a, just a, a 30 minute talk on and have it as punny as possible. Exactly. So, all right. So I'm going to take these and before I ever expand anything, I know I have this one here, but just so I don't have to go backwards or anything, I'm going to leave them as I do a duplicate just to make sure they're there as well. So I'll take these again and I'm going to expand these to just fills. Okay. So you can see the difference. Now I have that rather than lines. I have actual shapes. Okay. And this one, I'm going to take the compound path off release and ungroup and get rid of just that piece in the middle. So with these guys, now I want to do these, the little bit of the, um, the trim here. So I'm just going to make this nice and small. And I, what I'm going to do is to make sure I get this on everything. I'm just going to make it a compound path itself, right? So you make the whole thing, the compound path. If I take this now, duplicate him, put him right where that angle was again, send it to back, select both. And now I'm doing minus back and see, I get that nice trim right there. Ah, feels so Look clean. It's like ah, a nice fresh haircut. I know dude, right there. So now I want to do the same to this one and it's should be a little bit lower. So I'm gonna take that one, uh, copy X, send it to back with this and, oh, actually now we don't need it to be a compound path because I'm only doing it to just these guys. So you will go to compound path here and, oh wait, did it not stay? Let's see. Is it just grouped? Oh, because I already did a, yeah, there we go. So this one and this one, boom, there we go. This one we want a little bit lower. Cool. Send it to back and that, whoops. There we go. Cool. And we need it down here as well. So I have it, we need two. So there, back and release there. And one more, should be a little bit shorter. We'll line it up with that. Jan, Jan is the pun master. And Jan uh -oh. just said, pasa la vista, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have beat him to the, oh, wait, what did I have? Oh, pasa la vista, baby. Yeah. I oh, you did. <laughs> nice. Well done. See, PA well, for your thoughts. I, good, man. good. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I good. didn't even go through those. Yeah. I th yeah. Some of them I thought got a little bit, uh, a little bit crazy, but all right. <laughs> So anyways, I've got this cool one here ready to go. I think as well, that could be something where we might even just like did, do something like giving it a little, uh, maybe the wrong shape, but it could use a little bit of a flag on there as a, like a cool little secondary it, it piece, could. you know, kind of just, yeah. something, just something like that. I'm just going to put it there just so I remember, maybe not, but, or maybe it's over here to show I mean, motion. You could also almost... Motion. You can almost duplicate that negative fill that you have on the like in the V already. Yes. Just take that same shape and then oh yeah, resize it so that way it's like continuing the visual yep. language. That's a good idea. Also, too, we could take this and I think since we're talking about fast and speed, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna match that angle a little bit there. Okay, and then um, let's see what we can do with this guy uh, there. And uh, I'll turn them around. I was thinking of doing like something like getting some speed lines in there too. Could be kind of cool. Uh, speed lines are my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put those there for now, just as my reminder, but let's get to this guy. So I think what's cool about that is maybe this might just work with the same two V's. And then we take this one off and bring these guys over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Not bad. So the, I think the really cool thing about this, mm -hmm. not to like taint or change what you're thinking in your head. Yeah, like, go ahead, go ahead, man. The V right there 
itself without the speed lines necessarily yeah it just feels like it's it's one it's fast right yeah and i could also see it almost being like a like a resistance like if you yeah threw it yeah. up on a poster or yep. on like a, a sign they can yeah. be a mark for like the anti established pasta brand type thing where it's like Viva La Rista Resistance or some yeah, sort. Dude, like, I love it. That's a great like, idea. Do a spray paint texture on it. it can have oh, hell yeah. It's, be, it's cool. I like it. It's yeah. Like, so yeah, it's I, a cool shape. I like that idea too, like where it could be like if you think of your logo as a template that someone would spray paint to make their mark on, you know? Yeah. That I mean, would your, be, your whole idea of the Liberator kind of like right? kind of reinforces that narrative. Yeah, exactly. I kind of dig that. All right, cool. So we can mess around. We got that one kind of going as well. I'm almost thinking if we want to, here's where we can kind of do something where, oh, that's a nice big fat line weight. Let's get rid of that. Just thinking too, if we start messing around with that and then let's match these up. There we go. Okay. Okay. You know, and then get a little step and repeat kind of action. So just to have, chat, you know, if you're following along, step and repeat, just do command D or control D. Yeah. And just repeat the action that was so I'm gonna go like, several times. Just like that. I With uh, option down, you drag it, and then you just hit command D, and it will give you, look at that. So boom, always fun, right? Give it a little right. bit of a turn. There we go. So we got something there. Uh, might be too much, but I'm going to leave it. Um, all right, so let's get to, I'm going to hit save, by the way. <laughs> Smart move, smart move. <laughs> always my worst uh my worst fear um the other thing i loved was i came up with i was thinking of the bow tie pasta as maybe a flag and an idea that's a cool idea you know so i have um this guy here we go ah. and i have drawn pasta before <laughs> but i think this has lacks the dramatic vibe and feel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this and with uh, the width tool, this is great. I just Ooh. love this idea by adding these cool little flares to it anywhere you want. You get this like almost ink drawn variable width kind of vibe going, right? Yeah. This is just to me, this was a game changer when I remember seeing this. You're like, okay, like that's just all of a sudden now this has flair, this has character, right? Yeah, look it at feels the difference unique again. You're right? Where was my? Uh... There we go. Look at the difference. Yeah, massive. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Adobe. <laughs> so it looks like I have a little bit of. This looks a little. You can go and actually even like get into those areas that you think need it a little bit more, which is kind of cool, right? Yep. A little bit here. Cool. So we'll get rid of this guy. So now we have some more going. And then I think as well, this is obviously going to be something where we have some fun with it. Yeah. Jacqueline asked, uh, which, which yeah. tool was, was that again? And it's the wit tool. Wit just, tool. I think it's just W, right? Yes, I believe so. So it's this one that kind of looks like a French curve kind of thing on there. Uh, yes. And again, that's something I was always searching for until I made my own workspace. And now it's there every time. Yep. <laughs> always a blast. Yep. Okay. Yeah, make those tools and make those widgets and uh, workspaces how you want them, chat and save them. So you can exactly. Have them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the way to do it for sure. So something cool there. I, I'm, I'm cool with even just having a few of these just being like these floaters that I can just start coming, coming back to. But the, the thing I like is this idea of the brain dump like you're just yeah. you're not finessing fine you're not fine tuning you're just giving yourself something to kind of go with so um, yeah especially if you know you have like a day or two to work on this where you can like yeah dump pivot get as many directions out as possible yeah to a high fidelity or like high-ish not not completely yeah. done but yeah. like medium fidelity where you can yeah. like walk away yeah go for a run go for a walk whatever and then come back later the next day or something you can be like oh okay these directions either yeah i can fix them a little bit or this one is really strong I'll yeah kind of come to you it's kind of like you know what we're how we even set up adobe live you you, you take a break you come back tomorrow you kind of look at it with fresh eyes um yeah. you know unless now more than ever i i do i i do know a lot of people that are spending way too much time 
indoors at their computer and that that balance is really off and then you the burnout can happen as well you know which i'm right there with you i get it you know it happens all the time um yep. so the more you can kind of make sure you're doing something good for yourself too um this was uh, this was a random little drawing but it kind of looked like elbow noodles going off into this like with a little bit of at an upper angle with some cool little shoots behind them so i thought it'd be kind of fun to try to just mimic that really quick and do something cool. Yeah, um, I mean, you had a couple of names with uh, starting with Q as well, right? So exactly. That has a nice little abstract Q yep. going on. It's yep, really cool. exactly. So I'm just going to give myself two um, two paths here. I'm going to make an offset of about let's see, 0.5 maybe. Well, way too big. That must look really big on everybody's screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge. Uh, let's go point uh, one. There we go. Kind of looks good. There we go. Actually, this guy could probably even be a little bit smaller than, let's see. Oh, what did I do? Sorry there, guys. Sometimes my fingers are <laughs> faster. <laughs> let's get to scale. There we go. All right, let's make it like 90. Cool. So it looks like they should probably be a little bit thicker. We'll make them five kind of there isn't it funny when you're like you're scaling sometimes is so off to a drawing or something there we go yeah. now it's getting better and uh i think a, the outer one should probably be thicker okay cool so i'm just gonna draw kind of a line through there so i'm thinking do you think do you think i should cut cut it in half or or slightly less than half so it's it's not a half circle it's got just slightly more curve what do you think Ooh, do you know what i'm saying so like yeah can we try both <laughs> yes we can <laughs> yeah but limited pixels yeah because i mean for me i always am drawn to like the super geometric things so like but like i i, I can see asymmetrical being really really cool i can yeah. also see the like complete only half circle also been cool yeah yeah i don't know so let's see i'm thinking this one carol, would be the one like that carol said that this project did it for her. uh spaghetti sauce and meatballs defrosting for dinner so oh there you go changing defrosting. the world hope, hope glad we can help <laughs> i love it <laughs> you have to report back tomorrow carol and tell us how, how uh, we, we want pictures and the recipe please <laughs> yes. especially if it's your like mom's recipe or something like exactly right <laughs> historically kept secret yeah all right so there we go so got that going i can get rid of this guy now and the other thing i want to do is give it the round edges so i think there we go oh bada my bang, gosh boom. love it so now we got this one where it's a little bit slightly more, uh, whoops, a little bit more than le than half. Um, do these have fills? Let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, it must be copy X and paste behind. There it is. Okay. So these are in front. So that way I know I'm not going to cut the, the actual stroke there. I'm just cutting the circles. So I'm going to eyeball this for now. Cool. The moment of truth, which one looks better? And then we will round them. Yeah. The only thing I like about this one is it, it will help with the way they're stacked. So if we do like one here and one here. Oh, I can see your little sketches coming to life. Look at that. Yeah. I know. Ooh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. So maybe a little space in between there. Cool. And then what's neat is you actually have some of these lines. Well, this would work better for the, those stroke lines will be perpendicular, I guess, I guess, or parallel to them. So yeah, maybe yeah. he might be the better one. So I'm going to center that around there. And then this one right about there. Obviously we can get in there. There we go with our moving arrows. The cool thing about this is that that those like three noodle pattern would be a really great just extra pattern on totally the right or on the window or anything yes. like that just to give it a little extra texture. To the I'm brand. glad you brought that up. That's such a good point. I I think your work that does not become the final logo could always have a place in the brand. You know later Absolutely. on, which is so cool, right? So maybe what we do is we 
we pick some randoms like that one there, this one here, and this one here, and now we can make these a little bit, one's shorter, one's longer. <clears throat> Probably best thing to do a lot of times too is not designing this on an angle, design it. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm, you, you yeah, can finish, yeah. you can I, finish I, my sentence. <laughs> I absolutely struggled with that one. Like, oh, this would be cool on an angle. And then you realize you're trying to do 45 angle degree stretching. Yes. Of certain yeah. Things like, like you're, <laughs> you're kind of going through right now. It's like, how do I get everything to stay on the same angle? You know? Yeah. If you do it vertically, horizontally, you can quickly just move everything over you how yeah. you want it. You can stretch them, size them, scale them, and then rotate them in the end. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe one more, and this one could be this super short one here. Also, if you hold shift, yeah. you should be able to do oh. like a snap. Let's see. So if you do this, uh, there it. Oh, yeah. it, so it, it's like slightly like you kind of yeah. like walk the line, but you can yeah, kind of see exactly. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can kind of keep it going that way. But there you go. Yeah, it's still really finicky. So maybe if I just do this, I can see how good I am with it. Oh, you can see it. I'm a little bit off here. Yeah. But I, I think that's kind of fun. That, that has a, a cool little vibe to it. And again, yeah. the, those stro the, str the streaks could be a different color if we want to down the road. So maybe they're even they they could be the sauce. So yeah. I'm I'm actually bringing there's, color. There's so many things you can right? do with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. like this, I could see it becoming like clouds, and you have like rainbow, like that are like you could dig the noodles as like rain or whatever. Like you know. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Oh, totally, man. Yeah, exactly. Pasta the rainbows, as Mark says. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. So we got that. And then um, as far as cues go, I didn't have anything that I kind of was like, did the the, the typical uh, circle here with kind of like a squiggly to make the cue. Um, I had, then, but this, this one kind of stood out too as well, where... I was trying to think of something cool here. This would be like two penne pastas making the V again. Um, okay. Do you do you see anything you want to uh, create? You want me to kind of? Uh, this is for? your rodeo, but I like the the load chair that you did with the uh, the check mark. Obviously, the flag from the O is really cool. This? I think that yeah, I think. Oh, that'd be sweet. fun to actually and bring in a yeah and bring in a font yeah, yeah. and even the uh, the the Q underneath it. You have an X on. I think that's a Q. Uh, this the one? one, yeah, that one. I think that's cool. really cool. Like, that's a cool shape. It's yeah. got the flag going. Okay. I don't know. I think. I mean, even the uh, the key with the flag that you did below that kind of has the like Obama hope kind of symbol I, feel to it a little <laughs> that's bit. That's why right? I stopped it. I was like, oh yeah, we got the because uh, that's that's probably one of my internal favorite logos ever. Totally. You know? I mean, that's the thing is like when you start working on these things, you're like, oh man, these shapes really work. And why did they work? And then you, exactly, you start right? seeing it like, oh, like other people have also discovered how these shapes can play well together and get this yeah. horizon lines and things. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. So I was like, just let's mess around with that guy and see. Uh, I'm going to give it here. This is Termina. It's a very cool Bold is that font. Adobe font? Or I no? believe so. Yeah, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. So chat, you can play around with that as exactly. well. Exactly. So fonts.adobe.com. Yeah. So here's so now we got that we got that spiral, and I and our circle is not a pure circle. Nope. Which might actually benefit you, right? That might yeah. actually help you out a bit. So you, would you say make it a, a an actual circle with the spiral, or try to base it off the circle of this? What do you think? Uh, I would say that you have a general, the shape of the O and the C probably want to stay pretty similar. So yeah. I'd probably, I would probably keep the left side as close to the original as possible. Yeah. And then start to pull it in where point. Gotcha. Yeah. Woo. It's tough. I mean, you have like, a, is... it's like the, the, that typeface is like geometric. Yeah. To a degree. And then it's also... Like the O's and the C's aren't yeah. right. Like the V's, all the other letters play really well for geometry, but nothing else yeah. is like super <laughs> geometric. Which is putting you in this kind of hard thing because like that that sketch you had was like pretty organic in that that O. Yes. Uh, so it's yeah. kind of hard to like. I'd hate like let me see if uh, let's try. Let's see. I think a good one that I have would be like, um, like there you go, uniform. 
So now nice. we get at least something and it's still got, I think it's got a nice bold vibe to it. It looks yeah. good. Um, it's more based on a circle, which is cool. So I remember there was a spiral tool, right? In Illustrator. Do you remember that? I, I, I've never used it. I, I, I yeah, it's there is one. God, does there anybody, does anybody know? Isn't it part I, of like the mandala set type thing? Gosh, it used to be, it was in one of the, it was always in a, uh, one of these kind of like, Oh, you're right. You know, it was like one of the warp ones. Oh, yeah. you have a twirl tool. Go down. Yeah. Into that warp thing that you just had. This one. No. Uh, no. Uh, oh. It's a twirl. Yeah. That might help. Oh, let's. What is that? Does that Buckle actually. Up chat. We're going to find out. What's Whoa. Oh, there we go. Okay. Gotcha. There perfect. we go. Nailed Whoa. it. Yeah. it. <laughs> we figured it out. <laughs> oh, abstract. That's perfect. Let's see. It's the shape tool people are saying. Whoa. Jeez, that's not doing it. It's like it's like liquefied tool on steroids. Oh, that's well, that's kind of hey. Oh, it's close. It's got a, something cool in there. It's yeah. kind of neat. I, I kind of let's see. Maybe it's a little. I like that because it's a little more rebellious. Yeah, it kind of has the like Ubisoft logo feel. It to does, it. doesn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little messy. Let's look at it closely. Um, whoops. Interesting. I wonder if it's like. Can we mess with this a little bit? It might be neat because it's going to be so original. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's a that's a good pro tip if if you're in this zone and you want to sell it, just tell the client. But no one else has anything like, like this. <laughs> you see how it's perfectly round on one side and sharp on another side. Yeah, that's intentional. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's it's looking see. good though. It's getting there. It's something cool, right? Like just got to get a few of these look like they didn't get the round, the notice to get round. Exactly. Um, God knows what that swirl tool did while we were doing that. That was crazy. I had never <laughs> seen anything like it. Oh, and then you always have that guy, which is kind of cool. Just um, in case you want to add more anchor points. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here I was saying like, yeah, less anchors. Yeah. No, I do the same thing. I'm like, yeah. oh man, I could just round this corner out just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not really. I it was worth a it was worth a shot, but I we guess tried, like, chat. yeah, we tried. I think to um, what were the other options that you have? Let's oh here we go. So you have you have warp the tool. You have pucker, bloat, scallop, crystallize, wrinkle. God, there's so many good ones. I yep. just, gosh, I'm gonna do. What if we did, let's see, let's go back to that guy. And let's see if, um, when all else fails. <laughs> Just make it from scratch, who would have thought? <laughs> That's one of our taglines. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was copy pasta. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but we also had uh, make it from scratch in there too. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's true. Uh, chat we have in 26 minutes we're going to do the portfolio review countdown and if you're oh, just tuning man. in right now yeah nick is working on making a walk-up pasta bar and he's already done a lot of really great explanations he's defined the brand strategy and some kind of names ideas uh some voice and tone kind of yeah elements we'll, as well we'll take a we'll we'll review it as well but the whole idea is to kind of try to in in a in a two-day period if you've got a client that's ever in need of something super quick because of changing times and things like they need, I, I know every restaurant client of mine is trying something different every yeah. day, right? Just to stay afloat, to offer new offerings to their people um, and their customers. So I'm trying to find that kind of spitfire way to do something really, really fast and uh, and put it together. So here's kind of a look at where we, we are. We've done some cool ones with the V turning the pasta penne into uh, a V with a bit of a flag. We've done kind of our superhero uh, elbow pasta <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> vibes. Um, we have this one as well, which really goes off of our, um, uh, uh, what is our liberator? So the liberator brand archetype that we're trying to do. We have this to go back to as well, where we've taken the bow tie pasta and maybe turned him into 
a little bit of something fun for a flag. And then this vibe, like this to me, it has that rebellion kind of like everything about it kind of vibe where I think this could really stand on its own. Uh, we got a squiggly version and a non squiggly version. Um, we're right now working on this idea here for um, Vel Veluche and this idea of kind of doing something fun here. It might be neat that this is a little bit organic and almost spaghetti in a yeah. vibe, right? And that gets kind of the idea here. So let's say I'll bring it over to our type that we made and we can see how that starts to look. So let's bring it here, drop the O. I'm gonna keep the O there and make sure I get it right in the right spot. There we go. Get rid of this guy. What do we got there? What happened? Oh, these gotta come up front. There we are. Bada bing, bada boom. There we go. So maybe even a little bit bigger. You can make this um, for now a pasta-ish color. Sometimes too, like you notice when they when they do something unique with the O, I'm a I like seeing it where it's like it's ex, it's exaggerated the size of it and the spacing yeah. kind of stays maybe the same, but like we've got something cool here as well. And Honestly, then, I'm I'm really liking yeah. the contrast between the geometric type and then the kind of like noodly. Yeah, o. yeah, right. Yeah, it's like it's feeling really nice because you kind of cool. have like the the modern organic feel kind of happening where it's like you know modern yep. by the geometric type. Yep. Yeah. So maybe, what do you think, rounded or not? I would do rounded on yeah, the bottom you, at least. You yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll chop him off. Cool. So let's see. Do I have another flag that we liked? Um, that was that my... flag size from the, the, the your just initial sketch seemed good, but it looks like. Oh, I think we just had like a nice wavy like that, right? Mm -hmm. Just a little envelope bubble okay. on there. Cool. So I'm going to take him. Our friend... Uh, Envelope distort, does it nice and easy. Give it a little bit more. And yeah, that looks about right. We'll expand it. Boom. Copy to this guy, whoops. God dang it, I'm always in the wrong one there. There we go. We'll make it, let's get this guy here. Add it to our swatches and boom. 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 No. So chat asks, what are your brainstorming yeah. and sketching techniques? Ooh, brainstorming. Oh God. Um, <laughs> whiteboards and post-it notes by far are like a hundred percent where I start. I, I'm a big fan of like having a going off digital and doing it a little more analog, you Absolutely. know? Yeah. Uh, unless when I'm sketching, I think I've been, like I mentioned earlier, I've been a fan of doing it more on uh, the iPad, just as convenience and being able to take it outside or doing something yeah. cool. But yeah, I'm brainstorming. I, I, I love, I've got even the big um, post-it notes that are like maybe eight, half of an eight and a half by 11 size. Oh, okay, and, cool. And I'll pop them up. I'll do more, like my own kind of flow. And on the wall, I like to have it there so I can see it rather yeah. than in a book or something, you know? Yeah. Um, but more specifically, brainstorming is like, I like word, I, I do a lot of the wordplay stuff because I get to name a lot of the, the restaurants too and the brands that we get to work with. So I love that idea of like having a list of like words that go under this pillar, words that go under this pillar, then just start mixing and matching, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a big fan of like the kind of idea. What about you? Anything specific, anything unique you do? Uh, I mean, I'm, you pretty much covered it. I don't necessarily do like the like sketching outside stuff but partially because i'm always stuck inside yeah uh, but yeah. The, like the idea behind like putting stuff up on walls like whiteboarding um like foam coring like whatever we can do with like just posters and walls and stuff that's yeah. huge for me yeah uh, i think i read somewhere way back in the day that just like humans are so spatially like like we've just grown up in caves and all that stuff and like mm -hmm. we understand the world by like breaking it down by space yeah. So by putting it up on a wall, your mind can compartmentalize it and understand content a little bit better. So yeah, those sticky notes, like you're saying, by grouping them and placing them together in a lump on a wall, yeah, helps you process and categorize content faster. Yeah. Yeah. So same kind of idea with like, you can 
get a lot more ideas if you're out in the world, like running or moving, you'll see that like kind of like you'll have aha moments or the idea of like shower thoughts where you're like doing something repetitive and mundane, but your brain yes. can like free up and get some ideas out the door. So yeah, I love that. That that's really way cool. too nerdy into like yeah. <laughs> psychology. <laughs> but I think that's, that's, you're, you're right. I know a lot of people who are very digital in their way of like maybe organization and stuff. And I'm slowly getting all that in that's integrating nicely. Cause it's, it's just convenience obviously. But when it's brainstorming stuff, there's something I do love about just not even being at my desk, doing it somewhere yeah. else, right. Being gosh, if you have that ability, that's always cool too. One thing I noticed that was pretty cool. Um, this I think is brand new, but I'll bring this over. Have you seen this, the uh, extracting themes on Adobe Color? This is kind of cool. Tell me more. This is really neat. So I, I took, you know, we're not going the traditional route with like, remember I showed you some logos that we don't want to use, right? Yeah. So, but um, these are some really cool, like typical Italian restaurants that I found the images of, right? Okay. Yeah. So. I'm going to move it off the screen just so you can see, but I'm dragging it right into this, right? Okay. And it's picking colors from wow. there. And like, I don't know if I'd ever think of those, like those, those look really rich and authentic green and red, right? And you get this nice off color, almost oatmeal. So what's great is I made a, this is on, you're in your web browser, right? But if you're logged mm -hmm. in to your account, you basically, I made a pasta library and I will call this one, you know, like, uh, you know, pasta one. Okay. And then you save it. And what's great about this is now I can come back to here and in this pasta zone, you get all these, you get them here. I can add them to the, like the color swatch, uh, add themes to swatch. There we go. So now I have them right in there. And it's just That's so cool. Isn't that great? Like, it's just such a cool way to get, just don't ever rely on the colors in the default. Like that's number one, number one, you know, like make sure you're trying something a little bit fun and a little bit different. So like that green is obviously totally something unique and different. And then that red here, again, just so nice to have something really kind of clean and unique. And you know, there's some harmony with these colors because you've got them from like a natural source, Yeah, yeah. which is really, really cool. Look so that's that chat. Look at that. I, <laughs> Look Mama at that. Mia, as David says. <laughs> it's incredible. That's cool. That's Can cool. you set so, how many colors you want pulled from that? Yeah, I think let's try that again. So um where like if we, we want to just like a two or three colors, it would just give it to us instead of the four or five. Let's see. I think you can. So I'm gonna grab another one. Uh let's go back. Oh, do I just drag another one in? I see. Let's see. There we go. All right. Ooh, look at some of these colors I got. Oh, so nice. let's see. Colorful, bright. Oh, so what's nice is I can go with muted colors. I can go with the deeper colors. I can go with the brights. Mm -hmm. Colorful. So now I think what you can do is if you... Oh. Let's see. How can you change how many colors do you want? Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe mm. not. Maybe there's like a, maybe a, maybe, a, oh, let's copy a clipboard. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's even better. Yeah, that's cool. I know you can hand select these colors, but would you just, mm. I thought maybe because it's, they have a plus sign on there that you can just get another one. There's got to be a way. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Mm -hmm. Anybody in chat knows, tell us how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I think this yeah. just came out. And then you can even extract gradients as well. So look at this. That, that feels like a table. Yeah, <laughs> we've just made a table, uh, yeah. Alex. This is crazy in one click. So uh, one thing too about this, I know some people, I sometimes don't feel like I have the best knack for picking the gradient, finding the right value where the blend should start and stop. So again, here's some some fantastic new tools to, uh, to mess yeah, around this with. This is great. This is yeah. absolutely incredible. I'm like so excited to use there, this on more projects. There's so many good new, like I think this latest update, I still haven't gone through it yet, but I can only imagine what's uh, what will be by the time Adobe Max hits, how much new stuff we're going to have to kind of, you know, it's it's going to be crazy. It's just going to yeah. be crazy. It, it's so funny because you know, we're, we're in these tools all day, every day. And we, yeah. we get so used to the like, you know, five or six tools that we go to constantly, yes. right? Like it's oh, like, dude. 
all the time stuck and then they put in some new crazy idea and you're like oh oh wow this is really <laughs> cool this is really <laughs> damn cool <laughs> so. that's exactly my reply every time it's always like and I, yeah i'm i'm anxious to see what we got coming to us in the next few like what two weeks now when adobe max hits yeah i'm so excited. hard to believe i mean i remember when the rounded corners tool came in oh, and that was like what god six years that... ago now and i'm still like my my life has changed ever since that moment came in <laughs> <laughs> i love that i think that was one of those ones where you're like why was that never there before? Are you kidding yeah. me? Like that was just the greatest thing ever. I can't so, believe um, I've been doing this manually the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> and never uniformly, right? It was like just a, a mess. So, but there we go. So just, and maybe on this one, we can go slightly darker as like it's going to be. So I'm just going to like even now just start messing around with some color treatments and stuff. But how are we doing on time? How much time do we have before we're going to go in? About 14-ish minutes left oh, cool. before portfolio review. So I think okay. we can probably get awesome. another exploration. Let's, yeah. Let's see. Uh, does chat see anything they want to mess around with from... Uh, we had a few contenders here. A um, few contenders here. Let us know. Well, I'll, I'll do my best in, in building one out and we'll see how we do. Let's do... What do you got? What do you want to do, Alex? I kind of like the like those kind of like negative space ones that you like, have. Like this guy here? Above that to the the right up. up there you go. Like those, this one. Those kind of like have like a nice little negative space flag that you've got going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind, kind of reminds me of like a car badge as well, which is kind yeah. of exciting with the like speed. This guy. Yeah. That's Sweet. cool. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try this real fast. I'm gonna build it off of some like really wide ellipses you could obviously go in there and like like go in there and like um punk and bloat it and stuff like that too mm -hmm. but i'm gonna see if i can do something here where i'm a f I, I, even when you have a square and you make it with like slightly curved yeah. lines like this right so i've got that one i just copied it and pasted it in front and i'm gonna move this guy to match hit that one there. It's kind of Superman-ish, huh? Oh yeah. And then copy, paste in front, and then I'm gonna mirror this one just so I know it's the exact same angle. So there we go. That little guy right there. Beautiful. Cool. So I'm gonna use uh, divide, I think, um, in Pathfinder. You know, they, I've worked in with the Pathfinder so many times and I still just go around clicking randomly to hope it does what I want it to do. Yeah, it looks like I got it. So yep, yeah, there we, we go. Nailed it, perfect. <laughs> so we have this really cool, like nicely shaped kind of vibe here. And then um, to get that middle part, I'm just going to offset path and go negative. Um, so let's go negative uh, 0.2 maybe. Let's see. A little bit more. It looks like I got it a little bit more in that one. So I'll do 2.5. There we go. Nice. So I think I was trying to go for, it was almost a P or a Q. It could almost be either one. It's like, it's more of an emblem, I think, if anything. Right? Because see, I was like with this negative space in here. So... Let's see, we want to get something like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cut out. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, that's the one. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm going to take these, do a compound path out of that. And then this guy, let's make it all super thin uh, so I can see what I'm doing here. Cool. That looks good. So I'm gonna take this guy and put him to the back and with both of them selected uh, minus back. There we go. Oof. Ooh, Oof. look at that. He's digging it. Fill that. Oh, you're gonna keep it stroked. Ooh, I don't know. Oh cool. yeah, I mean, ooh. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool, all right. And then we got some, let's see. Oh, do I have two there? Oh, okay. What should we do to this one? So we've got, we do have those lines we can add to it. Um, let's hmm. see. You were thinking maybe even just solid. 
Yeah, I mean, you can have two variants with it, right? Like, that's an option. We got three mm -hmm. pixels. Yeah. Yeah. It kind, of, get... yeah, it kind of needs that, that outer stroke that you had. Yeah. What if you did one of these, like, where it's, like, almost... Um, Ooh, okay. The, the right. offset thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, we're rebellious, dude. Oh, we gotta. I'm loving it. We don't. We don't draw in between the lines. <laughs> yeah, that's for uh, that's for rule followers. Yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah, you know, just something in this kind of zone here. Okay. Right. That's one version. That's the one I'm digging. And then for you, let's see, we could do. I don't know if rounding just the tiniest bit of this. No, nah. he mm. loses his meanness, huh? Yeah. Maybe. Or what do you, do you think, think? Do you feel like the inside flag needs to be more flaggy? Yeah. And less triangly. Okay. These I are, like that these idea. are, if you guys don't know, those are very creative directory words for you. <laughs> flaggy. It might, it might have gone right over, right yeah. over your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. More oh, flaggy. I should, I should have saved the, um, uh, that one image, but I think I know what you're saying. So you, that, that would be the flag within the, the, the image. I get you. Yeah. Like if there's like, you know how you did the, like the ribbon approach yes. where it was like kind of like folded. Yes. Like maybe it's more flaggy like that versus like, like you haven't just add another triangle to the other triangle. Yep. I don't know. Okay. It, it's looking good. I, I just like I try I'm kind of losing the flag in the middle is the negative space. Yeah. So let's see if we actually, there we go. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like how that works a little bit. That's got cool. it. That's that nice. Spike. Yep. We will um, expand that. And uh, let's see. Do I need to? What did that do? That's kind of weird, huh? Oh, because, oh, see, it adds that uh -huh. little, that funky little thing in there. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. How can you? I guess the only way to do it oh, is. Oh, whoa. Those join tools. Are those. Oh, that's broken. Yeah, see, it did a. F I tried that bloat thing, and it kind of went the other way that I was oh, hoping. No. <laughs> see, I, uh, wrong move, guys. I before I cut that flag out, I should have saved that piece. But we can make a really quick one. So let's do it here. There we go. We'll make another one. Well, actually, what you can do, yeah, is yep. just copy everything you have, like yeah. just those those new two images you have. Yeah. Just grab them both. Like anything you don't want to lose, just grab them real quick on the that. So what on I'm this? gonna ask you to do is no, those two triangles oh, you have. Yes. Select both of those, copy yeah. in them. Yep. Okay. And then I would just uh undo everything up until Oh gotcha, yeah. And yeah. then just paste it back on place. Because <laughs> yeah. whenever you paste it in place, it'll still keep all the like, I, I gotcha. editorial stuff of it. Copy. There you go. Copy and then yeah. just undo everything and you'll get it back. I, I, I keep, when you were, I'm like, if he says that I'm going to die, cause I, I do that all the time. And I think all the time that is so wrong, but I guess, Hey, if they're giving it to you, there it is. There now you watch go. this guys. Boom. Look Still there. All right, <laughs> cool. So now we got this guy and we're going to want to make this guy a little more, uh, something different on the inside. Right. Perfect. So let's, uh, uh, uncompound path that this guy, we're thinking something like, Hmm. How would we do, do I have something already that was in that zone of kind of in with this kind of fold, like a fold yeah, like that? Kind of a little fold like that. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. What if we do, uh, notice how I tilt my head when I'm looking at it. Oh, I, I've, been, I've been watching at home. My head has just been like, I look like a, like a puppy uh, trying to listen. Like, <laughs> melting. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Okay, so we're trying to get that. So this would go, oh. Whoa, I got a curve there, that's why. Let's try doing the envelope and see what we can get from there. Oh. That could be neat. Just to make it a little bit different. That's cool. Okay. And then, um, whoops, expand. Cool. And just so it's centered in there. Good. Cool. It's kind of cool. 
That helps a little bit, right? Okay. And then just to get the same kind of vibe here. There we go. That's called amazing path work right there. That's beautiful. That's working. <laughs> With some head turns, it always helps. <laughs> Yeah, you and gotta then, get the perfect angle by my, my yeah. extra head touch. Oh, there you go. Okay, so there you go. There's kind of something cool going on with that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I I do like that. We can even like. I wonder too. Now it's starting to look like golf. Okay, we'll keep it there. <laughs> it's it's hard because I right now I'm like, oh man, I wish I could play top golf right now. Or you know? like, I'm like, yes. Uh, but like even that type, like that that V looks really good from a just like. Maybe it pairs with that the the tight faces that you already have. Like, there's an option to kind of use that. You know, sure. Yeah, that. this is that looks great, dude. I like that idea. Um, let's see. Think we could even try messing around with this guy for now, and see if um, one other. What font did we have that would be kind of cool to mess around with it? Probably something on the simple side. Um, there's so many great little typefaces. Oh, those. I know, man. Like even that pasta. I'm like, oh man, that, that's yeah, that's right. Funny. There's I, I just love some of these fonts, man. Oh, it's we're we're I, when I ever hear anyone say like, oh, I just couldn't find the right font. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> you know, come on. There's so much to go from. You could just have a blast with these. But like, we were going through something the other Ooh, day. Speed. Ooh. We were going through something the other day where um, we were like figuring out those perfect font pairings. Like, how do you get them together? How do you make sure yeah. if one has a lot of personality, that second one should be maybe a little simpler, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and do you find elements of your, your, um, your icon and your artwork that are representing in the font itself? Or do you add them to the font, you know, yeah. to make them have a little fun with it? But there's always, there's always a font. I mean, that's the kind of the coolest part, you know, it's like even something as simple as that. Yep. You know? And if you don't find one you like, you make, can it. make one yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly, dude. Like there's so many great ways to do that now. And even here, like I love when you, the font doesn't have, it doesn't have a bold. So I'm just literally going to yep. go back into offset path and make it a little bit bigger, kind of get it to point. Let's see, 0.01. There you go. Cool. Now it's balanced a little bit better. If this, if for this one, since we got a little bit of roundness in the font, this is the one maybe where we could take this and very, you know, what's funny if you really get in there and just slightly do those corners. Yeah. So it's an optical kind of thing. All of a sudden now it blends so much better with the font, you know? Yeah, it does. It's really, really cool. So yeah, Harbor Turf Design Studio says, reminds me of a pizza slice. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> there you go. Hey, but we're not just pasta, Italian. Steven. We're not just exactly. pasta. <laughs> Quick slices. Quick slices. Hey, that's, oh, if, if I'm ever going to open a place, it's going to be a quick slice pl place for sure. God, that. Can't now go we're, on. Just now we're, happiness to the whole Now world. we're just so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. But yeah. every time I do something here, it's usually food related. So there we go. <laughs> So that's kind of, so at least I've got some kind of starting point and what I'll, what I'll probably do in the meantime is refine one or two, have about the top five and we can recap that tomorrow, look at where they are, what changes we might need to be. And if anything too, the, it'd be fun to get the chat to almost play client a little bit, uh, go easy on me, but I'll, I'll, I'll open up chat as the, uh client dialogue that'd be kind of fun you know absolutely that'd be funny yeah. uh taylor asked what's the difference between using an offset path versus adding a stroke the the stroke is a little bit you can do that and then expand it but i find offset path actually either lessens or increases that path to the ratio you want much more much more have, uh, evenly throughout the, yeah. you know, also if you just stroke something and then give it to a printer or something, the chances of them being uh, messing that up because they just changed the width on that. Um, now it doesn't yeah. go, uh, it's not along your brand guidelines. So do yeah. whatever it takes to get there, but always expand whatever you have done. So it is not uh, editable to the point where someone can make a mistake, a mistake. Yeah, and I found that whenever you increase the stroke on certain projects or assets, 
it kind of breaks the path. Like yes. you're, you're depending on the angles, you can get a lot of like noise and weird corners and stuff. Yeah. If you get an offset, then it stays geometrically correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think also too, it's just nicer to see that you're, you can control that weight so perfectly with those little increments, the little up and down arrow, um, yeah. much better than by just adding point size to it. Um, I'm always fearful of that, you know, or, Absolutely. or putting something behind it with a, with a fatter, uh, line weight. No. Uh, so you're just, you're just messing yourself up. <laughs> it is now portfolio review time. So let's Excellent. jump into some candidates. Yeah. Are we ready to do that? Let's do it. All right. Give me a second here and we will take a look. Tell me if uh, we are good to go, guys. Yeah, let's go. Let's awesome. Cool. This is Zoe from Sweden. And we think she sent a, a message to us via our office hours um, program that we do on Fridays, which is kind of our portfolio review day. But dude, Alex, you and I get to go through these and this is fun. I'm excited. <laughs> Can you see the screen? Okay, man. I can see it beautifully. All right. Anything you want to start off with? Uh, pick, a, pick a tile. and um, Let's do Bond because I looked yeah. at that a little bit earlier. I'm really excited about it. I think oh, also just beautiful. from a Behance profile perspective, you always want to put like your strongest work right there, top left corner, first thing everybody sees. Yeah. It doesn't get lost if they're on the iPad or iPhone or anything like that. So just yeah. put your strongest work there. So we're going to look at that first. Um, and even even more so, yes, make that first, but look at the impression you get when this comes right on. To yeah. me, this is great. I love seeing, like, wh what are your first impressions when you see this? So straight off the bat, I love the like big, bold, huge image header. Like I try mm -hmm. to do that in all of my projects because you want to like grab people's attention immediately. And then I love the like, who is Bond? Like, what is the problem? Yep. How did I solve it? Type of like approach already. Yeah. And I think that's brilliant. Like, I think, my favorite part so far about the project and i guess we can scroll through it and go then we it. can yeah let's i'll go through go it a little back bit to here. each section yeah this looks great yeah. i'm a big fan of the cut this was a color palette that came from came from nature not from yeah. not from default palette <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah this is I mean, beautiful nick you yourself are like the case study wizard like you show a lot of just details and like guidelines and yeah. you build like really robust case studies. And I think this to me is like a really great example of just like building some like preliminary versions of, you know, that, that intense kind of guideline work that you do. I think yeah. it's a good start. It's a good, and I don't think you have to have like so much on it. If you are, if this was, uh, and what's great about this too, is I don't even know if this is student or real because if you can't if you can blur the lines there yeah. man you you've done it like i love that um she has just enough stuff here i think again let's go back to the beginning you you entice us with a really great image something rich there's tons of great resources for this now yeah. so no excuse to like have that kind of stuff right yeah. um the objective the one, the one critique right. i'm gonna give yeah. on the that header image is that that logo for me needs mm -hmm. to just be fully opaque and not transparent like gotcha. that opacity on there makes it a little bit harder to read I, like yeah what you're trying to do is like grab my attention you've given me this huge really powerful image that's kind of serving as a texture to yeah. the logo right like we everybody knows what coffee is right but like yep. the image is really cool and then the logo is developed in a way that is kind of by having the opacity turned down on there you're almost timid and you're yeah. not you're not teasing it but like be more confident in how you present the logo because you've got a really strong case study and just like be more confident with it so turn that opacity all the way up make it yeah strong good white point. and you're good to go good point what do you think about like we were just talking to where I, i'm a huge fan of this this great little icon i love the mm. off shift of it i love that the two on the right are a little higher and you can see what it does to the pattern when we look at it but what do you think of the relationship between the, the logo and the font choice Oh man, uh, like I, I agree completely with you. If you scroll down, that like that pattern is so. Oh, it's so playful. Well it's moving, and it's not like it's awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, I, I think that that pattern works really well, especially on the cups. Like it's it's really yep. cool. Yeah, but I feel like there is a slight disconnect between the type and the like 
icon work itself. Yes. Because I think it's it is a sensor of typeface, but it is organic in shape on certain things. And your the icon work itself is very geometric. There's yeah. no kind of organicness to it. So maybe the icons needed to either have a little bit of like width change on them. So it's not yeah. just flat line work or the typeface needs to be more geometric and like play off of it more. So maybe there's yeah. like a rounded edges on it and less sharp, but. I would agree. Cause I think too, you can see almost the B is made up of two of those little icons. The N mm -hmm. has it in there naturally. So like we're making a connection automatically. So like yeah. just a softening of the edges could be really, really cool. Um, yeah. But other than that, it looks great. I wonder too, like, you're showing me four images of the cup. I would say at least one of them, maybe the one she's holding, does that have, does the logo get added to it in one position on the cup? Just so the name's there, you know? Yeah, and I would honestly, I would just take off that logo on that, the mock-up where she's holding it. So yeah. I think, I think it's sometimes a really nice juxtaposition where you can have the 3D asset on the left side mm -hmm. and then a in-person asset on the right. And I think that's a really clever way of doing it. But then like throwing the logo onto it just feels like forced. Like I think let's do the product and lifestyle and leave yeah. off the logo. Or like you said, if the logo doesn't need to be there, impose it somewhere on the cup. Maybe it's another shot and it's on the bottom yeah. of the cup or something. Like, I don't know, but yeah, yeah. Incorporating that in some way would be nice. Yeah. Very cool. These look great too. Again, Cop like great. I would name your colors. I think that's always cool. You can call this like, you know, caramel, you can call this slate, or maybe tell us a little bit about like where the city is that this is located. So the street names can be used for colors. People eat that stuff up. Trust me. <laughs> and Jan, Jan coming back with the pun says bond license to brew. <laughs> oh my God. That so is good. perfect. So that good. is perfect. These, Love I think it. these look great too. Um, one thing I would su suggest is because she's got a very structured and a very, um, I feel like calm, organized, everything's got its place. One thing that would always add some, like the signature of the roaster or some little element of a human touch on there, uh, yep. a stamp of some sort saying roasted uh, today, you know, or something like that. Yeah, Something or, organic. Or like, and this is probably just me being crazy but like even a little bit of restraint with the pattern mm -hmm. like on this you have a great like the kind of like pantone swatch kind of approach with the type but like maybe the pattern doesn't have to be full bleed like yeah you already get it on the cup on certain things it works but i think maybe there's a little bit more white space or negative space and maybe the pattern isn't always full stretch yeah so just some some kind of thoughts around like give the the viewer or the eye a little bit of like breathing room sometimes mm -hmm. My, you could you oh. could be bringing in a nice shot like that you know or so in a in a way you have maybe one big you or or um gets oh, nice yeah, yeah, and big yeah. and it is the cropping of a great lifestyle image um mm -hmm. showing off how it maybe um another thing great is people love to know like tell me what this pairs with or what this roast would go with and so one little added feature above that and i think you got it really really made you know this yeah, looks this is awesome that shot with that the cup right there looks mm -hmm. great like yeah. seeing the reflection the it looks pretty good i'm almost thinking there might There's be a, a little warping. bit of curve going here so well obviously that, that but that cup goes inward too so that could be right on it's hard to tell but looks a lot better than um some that we we've been seeing you know yeah so this looks good. great I, I would say you could obviously add a few more applications to it i'd love to see what maybe the to go app may do like an app version of like when you're ordering uh to pick up or something like that yeah. that could be kind of fun a, um what do they call it like when you have a uh, a specialty club maybe there's the bond club uh is like where you get special features and stuff like that there's always yeah, yeah. Some really good things you can do but overall that looks really really good anything else you want to pick here before we go to another one uh, I'll let you choose this time. Let's see. I might have to go with, oh, that's a monogram logo. So let's see if it's a case study or not. Looks like it just might be that. We've got some well, cool animation fun. there. I like that animation. Yep. That looks good. I'm going to say this one might look like it is a case study. Let's see. Gotcha. Well, I, yeah, here I would never have put your titles 
uh, behind, like overlapping or underlapping your actual yeah. logo. <laughs> yeah. I, I think when all you work so hard on these monograms, let it sing. Like yeah, dude. I wouldn't even necessarily do the like, I would let the monogram sell the story. And yeah. then later on I could do like a SRP kind of like breakout of it. So it's a three by one. So like one div with you know, each letter and talking yep. about how they're all incorporated. But like you've, again, it kind of comes back to the confidence thing. It's like present your work in a way that you are confident that it's good enough and don't hide it behind things. So yes. right now you're hiding it behind the title or with the title and then feeling like you have to over explain the SRP. Like you kind of already say it in the title, it's a monogram. So it doesn't necessarily need to have all this information immediately. Correct. Yeah, you're right. I, I always say that too. Let it sing a little bit, let it have its space. For, yep. Especially for the first time we're seeing it solo, like monogram doesn't even need to be combining SP, SR and P, drop it down into a nice little area where you're showing how you, a little bit about your process. I'd love to see some sketches too. Show, yeah. you know, Alex doesn't sketch, but some of us do. <laughs> I sketch, but it's digital. Like, they, okay. In, and illustrator. Yeah. You know? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Well, then you're doing that because you got it ready to just drop in your case study. It's already, yeah, you don't have to I'm, scan anything. Exactly. See, you're, one, you're, usable. you're one so step even, ahead, dude. Even better would be to like, you could animate this just a little bit. Oh, like the, the monogram like itself. You, well, not even that. Just like, like the like idea behind explaining the SRP. You could animate in the Ooh, S. Yeah. You could animate in the R. And then you can animate in the P. And like just doing that with the animate path tool and... That's and, a great uh, yeah. after effects and that's pretty simple that's pretty low lift you can learn that within like An 30 or 40 minutes and on a youtube video so like yeah you can do these little things that will help your case studies just really sing so cool love cool. that idea yeah i would say to be consistent the way you showed us the coffee house do the same with this like i think this is missing a little more on the lifestyle like yeah. that human touch always adds a little bit getting yeah, giving us a see, nice title you could see a student with a binder or a backpack with the, like mm -hmm. a, the like logo and stitched into it or something yep. like that. Something like that with a hero image that you can get from Unsplash or Adobe Stock would really just totally help sell this lifestyle. But thank yeah, the Lord for thank the Lord for Unsplash. <laughs> All right, let's see. We've got this is Stuart from Waltham, Massachusetts. It looks like here, so he's got a momentum momentum. Uh, m monument sorry monument <laughs> brewery i'm like for some reason i thought it was momentum okay this we've is, been reading a lot today i know man and graphic designers don't read <laughs> <laughs> so this looks good i think that the the i would say I, i'm i'm a fan of kind of what what's happening the tone and everything looks kind of cool i would say it's not truly the case study just yet i want to see like we talked about a beautiful welcoming shot that shows me a glass maybe with the with the logo on it then walk us through um one great tip we got for when you're building your case study specifically if it's a restaurant or a place you would actually go is to set it up and take you through to, at the per, the place as you would if you were actually there so front door the welcome you know the first sign the first menu then the product itself and then maybe when you're leaving, what's their call to action? What is there an app or something unique? Cool. So always a good process to go. Um, what do you think? Of, I, I would say the font choice could be probably a little more like, I want to, I don't want to say original, but less something a little more that I would remember them by, you know? Yeah. I mean, I... what do you think? I don't know. So I, well, a couple of things that I really like about it is that they seem to be playing off of a monument of sorts. Yep. I can't tell necessarily which one it is or if it's just <laughs> one from Provincetown, yeah. but that's probably a local thing I don't know about. And that's totally fine. I think that's great. I like that the vertical spacing from that monument down to the ribbon below works really well. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure about the like badge thing, but I, this also is probably just a visceral reaction to everybody doing just badge type work yes you know like because you can you can quickly get a vector pack of badges and they kind of just start feeling generic at the time after a while yeah i think that the type for me doesn't necessarily play into the monument itself like the line work isn't consistent which makes it feel like 
yeah like, too disjointed i think like you're saying maybe it's needs to feel more like unique but i think i can see this working well like that typeface if this was the acropolis behind it yeah i can see it having some greek tones to it it feels like chiseled right yeah, yeah, it feels chiseled mm-hmm. like, yeah, exactly, like a column of some sort. Yeah. So I can see that working. I would, I think for me, if Monument Brewery is a brewery, I think I'd push it even further and say, this is the design language that we are going to have for each line, right? Mm-hmm. The parallel gets uh, one of the seven wonders. So you get like you the go. Hanging Gardens of Alexandria or whatever, and you get the the Egyptian pyramids and all these other things, and, you, and the Leading Tower of Pisa and all these other things you can like, lean into those and those can be their own design choice in this ecosystem exactly. have their own system and i think it's a really cool concept i love the name i think yeah. it's awesome yeah i love beer so that's yeah. cool that's <laughs> plus one for that. we're like check check yeah. check you know i think this is this is actually that's so cool this is really great like maybe and and it looks like you're showing options because here breweries in yeah. a different font so if it's going to be very exploratory make sure you're telling us that from the very beginning and it's not Maybe that is your case and you didn't make a case study, but what I would do is, man, this to me has the, the, the DNA to kind of start and make something great along yeah. with Alex was saying, where d- different monuments, different uh, variations of the beer that could be really fun to do. And, and like you said, I think I got caught up on just like that one piece, but like, mm-hmm. it does look like these were all different explorations. So I sure. Think oh yeah. There's, yeah. In, in a different way. Like I love that grid. That you're yeah. building this like isometric grid oh like, same here if you use that as the baseline where the m is just the pillars of mm-hmm. the monument essentially and then you can do your pyramid you can get out do of town your pisa you can do all these really cool things built off this m and that's super exciting yeah and that type actually works really well with it too so like totally that's my favorite if you're gonna present options or like sketches yeah. or these like initial ideas i'd say put them together and then really show the ones that you like the most instead of being like here's a lot of things that I made, but you have to kind of dig for the cool ones. Yes. I think. yes. Know what, like, uh, like curate your own collection. Think about like each person, as you look at your portfolio, you are your own museum. So think about how you present your work. Yeah, curate and edit. Story, exactly. Edit, yeah. edit, edit. Yeah, and be careful too about certain things where, like I would say the Provincetown, Massachusetts and anything underneath it. If, think of hierarchy think of scalability too when this gets shrunk down brewery and that do not play but when you have this you know obviously things are starting to work a little bit more and your your clarity is going to be there regardless of size uh, application as well you know um so good good start again you got a great name i would even just turn this into a full pitch deck then rather than a case study make it a pitch deck of your options that you would have done you know okay Absolutely. Uh, let's see what we got. All right. This is Casio and he is from Boston as well. Uh, 36 is calling my name. This is six days of type. Oh yeah, there goodness. we go. <laughs> All right. For anybody who's ever done 36 days of type, it is a pain. It is oh, so hard. I, yeah, I bet dude. Oh, this looks great. <laughs> wow, man. That is wonderful. Oh my gosh. That really looks awesome. Yeah, I like the half tones and the color swatch. Oh, I like I that. Love like that. the color swap as it comes into the letter itself is really cool. Yep, a lot of it looks when you see it here, you think, oh, maybe there was some formula, blah blah blah. But when you see it up close and in detail like this, you can really see all the nuances and the differences that are there. Yeah. It's really something nice. So I'm assuming he's going to go through all, but we we got a few here. <laughs> this looks great. <laughs> yeah, I think for me, like for 36 days of type, I there's kind of two trains of thoughts with it. Okay. I think some people build a system and they work in that system for the whole thing, which is what kind of has been built for this, where it's like, all right, I'm going to do this one thing. And I'm going to do it for all 36 days of type. I got you. And then there's some people who do absolutely crazy different explorations. I'm going to learn, try, test. Perfect. The whole time. Uh, and I feel like for me, I resonate more with the like, try new things and push exactly. myself creatively each time. Yeah. Because like, 36 days of type is tough. Like it's a grind. Like you have to push through it. Just anything that you commit to for 36 days is a little hard. Of course. Yeah. But like for me, it was like about exploring and stuff. So I think there's an opportunity to do that more versus like just doing the same thing. Like I learned from your A that you could do this really well. Yeah. From a hiring manager perspective, 
I, I kind of gotcha. want there to be more exploration so I can see your range and depth yeah. versus just like, you can do the same thing for every letter. Great point. Yeah. But yeah. to each their own. It's all yeah. to whatever. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, there's a brand identity. All right, cool. So No Sleep New York. All right. Yeah. That's looking nice and fresh. Good mock-up. I like that idea. This is the brand identity he created. Uh, Instagram account, the same name, multidiscipline art platform. Mission is to share a variety of artwork from various mediums. Very okay. cool. Okay, cool. So we're looking in here. I like, I'm typically not the biggest fan of just doing step and repeat logos, but that actually works really well. Yeah. The, like, on that index page where yeah. he's got the outline, like that yeah. looks so nice. It yep. plays really nicely. Yeah. Nice textural from that, that logo. So really well yeah. done there. I'd say too, like sometimes I think when you have too much of a connection between your brand uh, typography and then the, the font you use, if they're slightly off but different, it feels like a disconnect to me, right? Like, Correct. I think you can probably find something that just will have its own vibe and feel, but is complementary to your, you know, NSNY, mm -hmm. you know? Like I completely agree. Yeah. And watch your margins too. I think also too, like uh, someone had a great term for that where a lot of designers design for the, it, it was a hockey reference. I can't remember what it was, but it, everything's pushed to the edges where you want to make it like, you know, give yourself the comfortable margins. So certain times, like make sure you're getting in there a little bit closer. Yeah. I think, I think what you're mentioning about that typeface is that I think it's flat, right? Like mm -hmm. everything is super rounded, but they have flat enders. And I think yes. that's where the disconnect is. Cause that logo is all really bubbly all the way through. Yeah, exactly. So there could have been, like you said, just a little bit more finessing of that. I secondary agree. Type yeah. Pieces. This looks great. I think this is a nice little layout. That is really um, nice. You know, there's so much, I went through a ton of portfolio reviews at the end of last semester with so many other design teachers and everything. And boy, I've never seen people disagree more on the way like body copy is put together, you know, where this having the force justification, does it help when you get these huge gaps here? Like, I'd rather just see it centered, to be honest with you, or flush left, you know? Like, yeah, I think flush left would have been nice there. Mm -hmm. uh, especially like, yeah, there's a lot of line space too. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. So this is great. Yeah, I think I, I, this one thing I do like about this is it does seem to have a nice difference from page to page. It doesn't feel like a cookie cutter, you know? Yeah, and I love that. Um, I think the you know, more variety that you can put in there, I like the different like... Yeah, you know, oh, yeah, 30 this splits, the mm -hmm. five by ones, like that's all nice. Yeah, this looks great. So again, yeah, I think there's a good variety going through. It's not just, I think we all are guilty of it. Like sometimes you're just doing the same architecture page by page. I'm not a yeah. fan of doing, uh, call it page layout, brochure, document thing in any way. So uh, I'll applaud when I see someone doing something good. Oh, there you go. There's yeah, a nice version. Exciting. That's yep. cool. I mean, especially now with like, I can see that being used as like a zoom oh, background and all these yeah. other things. Like there's so many great little elements of all this. And I, I like oh, that God. compared to the, compared to the 36 days of type. I like that each page feels like you're pushing it. You're trying something new. You might be rebuilding the grid systems on certain pages, Exactly. all that stuff. So I think we have probably like less than a minute now. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, he got one more kick brand identity. It's kind of fun. Oh, that is cool. Yeah, Look, like that. that's, yeah, that's kind of neat. Again, I'm doing it. If you get my, do the head turn, man, you, you got something going on. That's cool. Futura, everybody's favorite. Okay. There you go. I like yep. it. Love it. There it is. Oh, that looks, now that looks really sick. That yeah, looks that's great. Cool mock -up. Love seeing that. Yeah, really yeah. nice and clean. The breaking of the circle is really nice. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Cool. So Nick, I know we're like really we're running out of time now. Can Let's do it. Just. Give us a really, really quick recap of what we were at. Perfect. Yeah. So we started on this pasta brand. We went through all of its brand ethos and who it was. Um, and what we did was we just started going right into the sketches and building a ton of different things to start kind of having some elements that I can start messing around with. And we're going to tomorrow, we're going to fine tune these into maybe three final pieces and we're going to build a system for each one. So we'll have secondaries and things like that. Should be really, really fun. Looking forward yeah. to it, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to see 
where are we end up tomorrow? And we might have pasta in front of us tomorrow. You never know. <laughs> I think I need to make some actually. I'll just start slurping. We can have an exactly. ASMR show. Uh, <laughs> thank you everyone for hanging out today. Thank you for the portfolio reviews. We will be back tomorrow. We cannot wait to hang out with you again. Yeah. Please come bring your favorite pasta recipes and join us <laughs> tomorrow. Bye guys.